Libraries and archives make use of protective enclosures to safeguard their collections. These archival storages are supposed to work as a barrier against acidic materials and to add extra support against further damage. Many types of enclosures are available on the market in an array of different materials, all with a design that could fit almost any item of your collection. From simple envelopes, folders, sleeves, binders, four flaps, and boxes to more complex and custom-made ones like clamshell boxes. This video and associated poster will focus on showing the making of basic archival enclosures for books and pamphlets. Before buying your archival storage, carefully do research on their components. Make sure they meet conservation standards for the specific materials you will store. This will reinforce the durability and protection of your collection. This type of material usually comes with only one signature and multiple folios, all them stapled through the fold. Staples are easily removed and quality thread is used to sew into a new binder. All the measurements will need to be done before you start the process. Be sure to measure carefully to avoid any mistakes. The width of the boards should be cut narrower than the actual width of the pamphlet, and the height of the boards should be cut one quarter of an inch taller than the actual height of the pamphlet. Each cloth piece for the pamphlet spine should be five inches wide. The outer piece should measure one inch longer than the boards on either end, so it will allow extra cloth to be folded over. Using an archival adhesive, glue the two pieces of board on the back of the cloth, as shown on the image. Use the ruler as a guide to ensure the boards are placed squarely. Fold and glue the two end parts of the cloth. The height of the second piece of cloth, which will be glued in the inside, should be a little shorter than the boards. The final steps for finishing this technique will be sewing the pamphlet into the cover. Remove the staples from the pamphlet and make the holes for sewing. The pamphlet style requires five holes, which you will make with an awl or a thick needle. Distribute the holes equally along the fold, with one in the middle and two on each side. Start sewing from the inside and follow as shown on the video. Finish the inside with a double knot. Now you have your cover ready. Located in our library's archives is a set of soil survey documents for every count in our state, which includes an informative booklet and an attached map. These large maps were difficult to open due to the manner in which they were attached to the pamphlet. Through the years, some of these pamphlets and maps were badly damaged, showing several signs of paper stress, large tears, small losses, and weakness on the folded areas, especially close to the cutter where they were attached. After careful examination of these materials, each booklet and map were removed from the commercial pamphlet binder. The maps were separated from the back of the pamphlet and housed in a customized four-flap enclosure. 
This procedure better preserves the integrity of each map, allowing it to be open on a large surface rather than keep it in its original format. Keeping in mind the final binding structure, we opt to have the four flap structure made to the same size as each pamphlet. The booklet was sewn in a pamphlet style through a folded hinge using the same cloth that was used to cover the outer boards. The final result was a solid case construction in a book format covered with a conservation book cloth. The labels were laser printed and a layer of Clucel G was brushed on to protect and prevent bleeding of the ink. Flap enclosure offers protection for a variety of library and archives materials. Creating this type of enclosure will require very basic archival materials. You will need to test the paper grain to facilitate the folding. Cut a cardstock strip with the same width of the book with the grain running perpendicular. This is where you are going to fold the card. Measure the book length and the thickness. Mark your measurements on the card strip and fold it four times to completely cover the book. Cut another piece of cardstock that matches the height of the book with the grain running vertical to the height. You will make the marks to fold, keeping the first strip wrapped around the book. Use a ruler to help, folding at the appropriate locations. After folding, you will have the two pieces perfectly fitted to the size of the book. You can also glue them together as seen here in a cover made for another book with a little variation. Note that each flap covers the entire side of the book, avoiding any marks the cardstock could imprint on the original cover. The simple solution can be easily assembled and tied together with a cloth ribbon. Another method to close the four flap structure is using rivets, plastic discs, and a cord, as seen on the image. Clamshell boxes are more laborious to make and usually used for the storage of hair and unique items. They are composed by a large base where two halves are attached. Each half is custom built to fit the item. In this example, both clamshells hold items from our special collections. A book is housed in a smaller box and a collection of medieval manuscripts in the larger box. No matter how large or small your collection item is, there will be always a solution for its storage. Keep in mind the preservation standards mentioned earlier in this video and use your creativity to find adequate solutions.